Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel and I thank you for taking your interest in this topic. In this video, we will see what is a tenor diagram and what it is used for. Tenor diagram is associated with municipal solid waste and it is specifically deals with waste which are used as fuel in an incinerator. So basically, in this video, I'm going to share with you a few important steps you need to know on how to draw and find out the point of intersection in the terrace diagram and ultimately derive the information it represents. For your information, with the help of a terrace diagram, we can actually determine or forecast whether municipal solid waste are feasible or not to be used as fuel in an incinerator. So, for better understanding to what I just said, let us start from the beginning. You see, normally, the municipal solid waste which are generated are collected, stored, transported, and then finally disposed of into a landfill. However, in order to minimize the volume of waste disposed into the landfills and consequently reduce the environmental problems, the management team and decision making experts dealing with municipal solid waste management came up with an alternative. That is, instead of disposing of the waste into the landfills, why not transform or convert the combustible waste into fuel, which can be used as a fuel in an incinerator plan. However, you need to know that not all type of solid waste generated will be an efficient source of fuel for an incinerator, or you cannot randomly feed any waste collected into an incinerator because the incinerator treat waste with great variation. For example, Either waste, biodegradable waste, construction and demolition waste will not be a good source of fuel for an incinerator because they burn insignificantly and generate or produce significantly low amount of heat. Therefore, for the municipal solid waste to be used as fuel in an incinerator, the waste proposed to be converted must possess few important characteristics and these characteristics will indicate whether waste is an efficient fuel for an incinerator or not and the important characteristics i am referring to are number one is the moisture content the waste moisture content should be less than 50 percent because waste should not possess high moisture content otherwise the waste will not be an effective fuel that will burn inside an incinerator. And number two important characteristics, the ash content of any waste should be less than 60%. Otherwise, too much other byproducts will be generated, therefore reducing the performance of an incinerator. Number three important characteristic is the rate of combustion. The waste combustibility rate should be greater than 25% because less than that, the waste will not be combustible and, and the incinerator won't be effective and its purpose will be lost. So theoretically, based on these three important characteristics, waste can be determined whether it is an effective source of fuel for an incinerator or not. And how do we determine that? It is now where the tennis diagram will come into play. So first, let us see what is a tennis diagram. And shortly, we will see how to plot or draw the tennis diagram and most importantly, how to derive the information it represents by finding the point of intersection of moisture content percentage, ash percentage, and combustibility percentage. By definition, a tenor diagram is a triangle diagram that helps to determine or forecast whether 
the waste composition is suitable or not to be used as fuel in an incinerator without any additional supplementary fuel. So this picture, this triangle that I'm talking about is actually a tennis diagram. So in simple word, you have a waste or a municipal solid waste. And to determine whether the waste is feasible to be fed or to, to be fed into an incinerator as fuel or not, these can be done or determined with the help of a tenor diagram. Next, we will see how do we plot or we read and interpret the result from the tenor diagram. So the tenor diagram is actually a equilateral triangle. So just for easy understanding, let the three sides of the triangle is A, B, and C. And D and the positions are placed in an anti-clockwise direction. See, A, B, C is an anti-clockwise direction. So side A, B represent the ash percentage. Side BC of the triangle represent the percentage of combustibility. Side AC of the triangle represent the, point, the moisture content. Following the side of the triangle, even the reading of the three important characteristics follow in the same exact direction. A, B, C, A. So that's how the direction moves even for the readings of these three different important characteristics. However, the next important point to remember is to find out whether the intersection points of the three important characteristics falls whether within the shaded portion demarcated with red color or outside the shaded portion within the triangles because if the intersection points falls within these shaded portion then the waste will be considered to be feasible to be used as fuel in an incinerator whereas if the intersection points falls outside this shaded portion or the would be marketed in red here if it falls outside then the waste composition will be considered not feasible to be used as fuel in an incinerator. So now for better understanding, let us use this example and the data given in the table represent the waste compositions of waste collected from two different landfills, that is landfill 01 and landfill 2. So based on the hypothetical raw data, we will use Tanner's diagram to determine whether landfill 1 or landfill 2 waste composition is feasible to be used as fuel in an incinerator. Now, step by step, let us plot and find out where is the point of intersection for data from landfill 1 using the data given in the table where moisture content is equal to 52%, ash content is 35% and combustibility is 20%. So first, the moisture content percentage is 52. And the moisture content data will be plotted against the ash percentage or side AB of the triangle. The reading is 52. Okay, moisture content is 52. So you'll find it like this. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 52 will be somewhere here. So you draw a line. So this will be the against the wall of the ash percentage here. That will be your moisture content. Next, the ash content percentage for landfill one is 35%. So the ash percentage data, which is 35%, will be plotted against the percentage of combustibility or against the side BC of a triangle. Okay. So here the data reading here is 35. So 10. 20, 30, and 35. So 35 will be here. So that's how. Okay. Next, the combustibility percentage is 20%. So the percentage of combustibility data will be plotted against the moisture content here. 
the data is 20%, so 10 and 20, so draw it this way. So now you'll find that the data from moisture content, ash content, and combustibility percentage is here. See? Now, if you look at this dot here, this dot here is outside the shaded portion. Okay, so this indicate that the function you can derive that whatever the waste that is present in landfill one having these uh, waste compositions, this waste is actually not feasible for use as fuel in an incinerator. Similarly, now let's work on for data from landfill two. Okay, so the moisture content from landfill two is thirty five percent. Ash content is 25%, combustibility is 40%. So in the same way, the moisture content reading, which is 35%, will be plotted against the ash percentage. So here, the moisture content is 35. So 10, 20, 30, 35 will be somewhere here. Okay. And similarly, the ash content will be plotted against the percentage of combustibility. And the ash content here is 25%. So 10, 20, so 25 will be somewhere here. So see, and combustibility percentage data, which is 40%, will be plotted against the moisture content. And the data here is 40, so combustibility here. Now 40% is 10, 20, 30, 40. So here you see. Now with this, you see that the point of intersection of these three data from landfills was found to be inside the shaded portion and this indicate that the waste is feasible for use as fuel in an incinerator without the help of any supplementary fuel. So with this, we have come to an end of this video and these are the reference that I use for this video. And with this, I believe that this video will help you in understanding what is a tennis diagram, what is used for, and how do we plot or draw a tennis diagram. And basically, most important, what information is being derived by using a tennis diagram. And please kindly support my channel by subscribing, and your comment and like is also appreciated. Thank you so much once again. Thank you for watching, and God bless.